Hi guys, good morning. Happy Sunday. I'm greeting you from New Beginning Worship Center. We are located at 200 Southside Drive in Milledgeville, Georgia. You are welcome to join us every Sunday at 1130 um, via Facebook or you are welcome to come and join in. You can come and join in um, at the church in the midst of our gathering and we are following CDC guidelines. Temperature is checked at the door and so on and so forth. So I'm excited. I want to share this nugget real quick. I don't want to hold you long. Um, but when you get a chance, please read John chapter 4, the entire chapter, if you feel like it. But it's just something I want to jump into just to grab a little nugget out of it. And um, if you have your Bibles, or if you don't, please uh, write the scripture down and go back. I, I love the word of God. And I, I love when the Lord give me revelation of something. But, I, but, but what I want to share is, I know we're living in a time with so much rebellion, even children don't want to listen to their parents. And, and um, you know, and e even if they're headed to trouble or into trouble, um, you want to share with them about the trouble. But many have closed a deaf ear and they don't want to hear. And so I want to go down to the scripture and um, here in this particular chapter, Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman, which was not allowed back in those days, but Jesus is Jesus. And the woman even shared that with him, you know. So um, in verse 16, he tells her, he told her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. Um, what you have just said is quite true. This is what the woman is sharing, um, answering Jesus back. In verse 19, she says, uh, she says, sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Hello, somebody. I can see that you are a prophet because he was able to tell her um, of herself. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. I want to jump down real quick. In verse 27. Now, mind you, this is just Jesus and the woman. They're talking and, and they're, they're conversing, and Jesus is, is really um, telling her the problem that she had and the things that was going on. Mind you, there was nobody there but her and Jesus. The disciples was going into, to, into town. So we're getting ready to read the scripture where the disciples are now coming back, okay? And verse 27, this is where the disciples are rejoining Jesus, okay? Just then, his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water, water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man come see a man who told me everything I did. I want to stop right there. I want to stop right there for just a moment and just kind of throw in that and, and throw something in, in right there. God Almighty. We need people in our lives that will tell us the truth about everything we've done or everything we did. And not in, uh, in an ugly way, not in a judgmental way, but saints of God, we need people in our lives that's going to tell us the truth. Amen, somebody. Now, notice the woman, she did not get mad at Jesus. But in the midst of him telling her everything she did, she went real quick, fast, and in a hurry. She went to evangelize. Huh? Because she went and told the people about Jesus. She told them, come see a man. Are we telling anybody about Jesus? Are we telling anybody about Jesus? Are we telling anybody in love about Jesus and what they're doing? I know my kids, you know, I don't, I don't jump on them about everything. No, I do not. I don't jump on nobody about everything. I'll touch it if the Lord lead me to touch it. But are
are we telling people the truth about themselves? Friends, are you telling your friends the truth about themselves? And, and your friend not get mad? Because thanks to God, we are living in a time where you can tell people the truth. It's the truth. And they get mad at you because you're telling them the truth. But this particular woman, God Almighty, she didn't get mad at Jesus, but it turned her into an evangelist. <laughs> it turned her into an evangelist. So what are you saying, prophets? What I'm saying right now is because Jesus told her what she did, it changed her life. Yeah. Sometimes we hear people tell us, tell me the truth. I want to know the truth. And you can tell them in love and they will still get mad. They will still get offended. We are living in a time where the spirit of offense is so, so, oh God, it's, it's, it, run, it runs rampant. I would rather you tell me to, the truth than to tell me a lie. But when it has to do with ourselves and when it has to bring about a chain, the enemy don't want you to hear that. The enemy will cause your loved ones, your best friends, and anybody else to get mad at you when you tell the truth. Don't stop telling the truth. Tell people the truth, tell them in love, and continue to love them. If they don't hear you, you've done what you're supposed to do. But in this hour, we need the truth. And the truth is the word of God. Tell people in love, you can't change them. You can't make them. Only God can. God bless you. God keep you.